The nursing.com SOC method is a four-step process, S-O-C-K, and stands for side effects, organs, cards, classes, considerations, and must know. The SOC method will give you a simple framework that you can use over and over to learn nursing pharmacology. And this is the exact same process I used in nursing school and while working as a nurse in the ICU to learn medications. The first step in the nursing.com SOC method is side effects. Look, you can't possibly remember the myriad side effects of every single medication. Instead, I want you to focus on life-threatening side effects that impact major organs and contraindicate therapy. One key to learning side effects is to understand the intention of the medication in the first place. Some side effects you're going to see are going to be the exact opposite of the intended therapy. For example, a patient receiving thyroid medication might experience a thyroid storm when receiving thyroid replacement therapy. Look, it's possible getting stuck trying to remember the 4,338 different side effects of Tylenol, but that's not a realistic goal. Instead, focus on the key life-threatening side effects of major organs. The next step in the SOC method, the O, stands for organs. As you study medications and side effects, you should focus on major organ systems of the body. Now this all goes back to the ABCs that we learned from day one in nursing school. For example, if you're giving a CNS depressant, that's fine, but if your patient has a depressed CNS response at the moment, you should not be giving that medication. Other side effects, while important, always take a back seat to the ABCs. In general, I recommend the following organ system hierarchy when learning medications and side effects. Cardiac, respiratory, neuro, then moving on to renal, GIGU, integumentary, and lastly, musculoskeletal. If you forget that steroids cause soggy bones or osteoporosis, that is far less important than forgetting that something depresses the CNS or has fatal cardiac implications. As a nurse, you're the one right there with the patient, either administering or teaching the patient how to administer the medication. A prescription does not mean you must give a medication. Be a clinician. By this, I simply mean use your nursing judgment. You're the eyes and the ears of the medical team when you're sitting right there at the bed with the patient. Use your nursing judgment. The next step in the SOC method is C, which stands for classes, considerations, and cards. This is a really important step, and I had to throw three different things in here. But first, let me talk about classes. At nursing.com, we recommend learning the pharmacologic class of medications for three reasons. The pharmacologic class goes hand in hand with the A and P of the medication. The pharmacologic class tells us how the medication works in the body. So if we understand the A and P, it becomes much easier and much faster to learn the pharmacologic class. Number two, as you understand how the body works and how medication works within the body, you start to piece things together much faster and much easier. Now third, and most importantly, Generic names of medications are based on pharmacological classes. So if you know that H2 antagonists end in I-D-I-N-E, anytime you see a medication with I-D-I-N-E on a MAR, on a test, or anywhere else, you know that it's an H2 antagonist. That's why it's so important to understand pharmacological classes for those three reasons. Now let's talk about considerations. When learning a medication, it's really important to think about the nursing considerations. These include things like administration concerns, patient education, and vital information. Within administration concerns, some things you might see here would be how slow to administer Zofran, or on the opposite side of things, how fast to administer adenosine. If you confuse these two, or if you don't follow these two, this is a huge, huge problem and an administration concern. You might also see in here pregnancy categories. This is really important to keep in mind. Or, for example, teaching a patient not to drink grapefruit juice or eat grapefruit with a specific medication. Basically, you really want to look for considerations that will be detrimental to the patient, allow them to administer the medication themselves, or interfere with the intended therapy that we're trying to provide to the patient. Early on in my career as a nursing student, I began to notice a pattern. 
some medications are tested on and given far more than others. Now, why is that? Is it because we don't care about patients who are taking abiloperatide? Well, no, of course not. It's just that some medications are given to far more patients in far more instances and are far more important than other medications and therefore are medications we should learn and know more. Now, did you know that as of 2014, the FDA had approved over 1,500 medications? Now, if it were possible to memorize all of those medications, you would be the most amazing pharmacist in the world. Newsflash, you can't do that. It's impossible to memorize all those medications. So here's what we've done for you here at nursing.com. We've outlined the most commonly prescribed medications, cross-reference that with our list of the most commonly given, the most commonly tested, and the most commonly seen medications in nursing school. And we've put that all together for you into a book called 140 Must Know Meds. If you're struggling with nursing pharmacology, you are not alone. Many nursing students and nurses struggle with pharmacology. If you want to get our free book, 140 Must Know Meds, head over to nursing.com slash 140 meds, and you'll get a copy of that book for free when you pay for shipping. All right, guys, we love you guys. Go out and be your best selves today. Happy nursing.